So how are you enjoying uh, Collectors Con so far? I love it so far. Any, any excuse to go to a card show, I'm in. Yeah, and this is a really clean show. It's only their second time producing this. Yeah. And it's impressive what they've done so far. It really is. I, I'm excited for this show and the growth for it. I hope it really becomes a national type show. So you work for CSG Certified Sports Guarantee? Guarantee? Yes. Okay, cool. And how long have you guys been grading cards? So CSG launched this past February, so we're coming up on our one year anniversary. As a company, CCG, Certified Collectibles Group, we've actually been grading collectibles since 1987, actually. Wow. Yeah, so we wow. started with coins, the world leader in coins. I'm sure you've heard of C CGC, comics. For sure. So we're leaders in comics. Uh, PMG is our paper money division. And we also, in our overseas offices, we grade stamps on top of that. So you guys have been in the game for a minute. This isn't something new to you guys. That's you mean, right. Yeah, for wow. sure. Coins since 87? Yes. Wow. And then comic books started around that Co too? Comics or? started in 99. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it started with coins. It evolved to comics. Now we're on sports cards. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So I, I saw you guys pop up in the, at the Dallas Card Show, which is one of my favorite shows. Yeah. And then at Collector's Con. I even used your slabs, by the way, in my own, you know, my razes and my breaks and all this stuff. Nice. It's a clean looking slab. We actually Thank have you. one right here. This this is a sample. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So it's a sample card. Yeah, it's the essay is for sample. But I mean, it's a clean looking card. You have that kind of refractor effect on the top. I, I love it. I think it looks clean. Now let's get into the, the grading process because all of us card collectors are obviously screaming at the top of our lungs <laughs> when we don't get a, a 10. So the factors obviously centering, surface, edges, corners. How long have you been grading? So I've been professionally grading cards for 22 years now. 22 years, wow. <laughs> and where have you worked? Uh, so I was a uh, senior vintage grader with Beckett uh, for 16 years. Oh my God, okay, so there, you're like one of the goats in the industry. Uh, I've, really. I've been around a little bit. Cool, very cool. So you know, you know all the ins and outs. Can you give us an idea what distinguishes the difference between a nine and a 10 in your opinion? A, a great example here. These cards, you know, I hear this all the time, come straight from a pack, it's got to be a 10, right? right? And that's not necessarily the case. There's printer issues there, manufacturing issues. And on modern cards such as this, you know, your two biggest areas that uh, keep you from a 10 uh, are the surface and the centering. Uh, people call etching, we call them bossing, you know, those can be off. Uh, and you may not see that right away. You have customers that send cards in, it's like, well, this card is, is a 10. Well, condition-wise, overall, it, it, it is, but the, the embossing is off. So that's kind of, that's similar to, to centering. Those are your two biggest factors in, in you know, brand new ultra modern. Now we can obviously understand, you know, if it's a sheet of cards, right? And that sheet gets just moved slightly off 90 degrees, right? I get the centering issue. Now, in your opinion, when, when these manufacturers, when Panini or Tops or whoever it is, how do you get these surface scratches in the manufacturing process? Do you understand? Yeah, that you know, and that's the thing with these, these surfaces, you know, they're, they're so smooth of a surface that it doesn't take much to scratch them. And even sometimes in the packaging process, they can actually become scratched. Wow, okay. So you'll have some, some minor scratching, some and very is minor. Is that from the machinery or like? Sometimes it's from the packing machinery okay. once they're, when they're putting it into packaging. Right, and that's what will prevent that grade of being a 10 or, or whatever it might be. It can, but you know, and even when boxes are sent to, you know, wherever you're buying them from a dealer wherever you know the cards move in the packs as well that small amount of scratching you know that's still a 9.5 that's still allowable for a 9.5 it may be it may keep it from going to steam 10 but we can still look at a gym mint card with those minor scratches and psa tends to not give out those half grades as often as as bgs obviously now with csg you guys are giving a lot of nine fives and as opposed to tens is it really tough to get a 10. yeah you know that is the thing is the 10 10 is a premium you know we have we have two different tens we have pristine and perfect okay uh just quickly the difference uh a card without subgrades can still receive a grade of a 10 pristine okay a card with pristine means 10 on everything no, so a pristine would be, if it was subgrades, it'd be three tens and a nine five. Got it, got it, got uh, it got Now it. a perfect, our perfect 10 is quad tens. It has to have subgrades of all tens. So perfect is up here, pristine is right below. Yeah, right below, got very it. close. Okay. Just a half, half a grade away. <laughs> well, listen, I think it's cool to have those kind of different grades though, because you should get a couple more bucks if you get those four tens, quad tens, that's, that's impressive. Absolutely, and that's the thing, you know, we look at it, you know, a card that's perfect, they're gonna be very rare. There's very few of them out there. But to be able to distinguish those from a 9.5, a 10 pristine, and have this perfect 10, it's, it's, it's a special card. It's absolutely special. So if you see a CSG perfect 10, it's a rare thing. Yeah, and I mean, listen, as a grader, you're receiving so many cards that could have been just pulled, or obviously you could have received cards that were printed 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, right? 
I'm a breaker, so I am constantly opening new packs of cards. So it obviously breaks my heart when I pull something out of a brand new pack and it's grossly off center yeah. or there's a printing line or there's a surface scratch. I mean, these things, like I said, they're, they're heartbreaking because I'm pulling cards for my guys on my live streams and our followers and I want them to always, right out of the pack, at least have a chance at a 10. Sure. You know what I mean? You Absolutely. There's no guarantees, obviously, but you, when you pull a, a card out of a brand new pack, you want to be able to say, listen, I'm going to send this off to CSG, and I hope that I have a chance at a 10. So Absolutely. It, and, you, you know, from the grader side, you know, we get excited when there is a perfect 10 or a pristine 10. You know, we want to give those grades if the card warrants that. So we get excited, too. You know, our graders, man, I can't believe this is a perfect 10 getting ready to go out, you know, on the market. It, it's a cool thing. So we, we get that, too. Now, what about cards that are, let's say, 10 or 15 years old? Can you still get 10s on those? Is it difficult? Or? Absolutely. You know, it, it is difficult, but, you know, there's, there's product, you know, it's still out there from, from 10, 20 years ago. There's still chances for that, as long as they were protected. It's definitely well, still possible. What warehouse they stayed in, if they were in a yeah. cool climate, stuff like that. Yeah, right, right, absolutely, right. yeah. Now, you personally, obviously, have graded maybe hundreds of thousands of cards in the last 20 years, right? Well, it's interesting that we were just having this conversation. So uh, another grader, it's been been around for a while. We, we were talking about, do you know how many cards you've graded over your career? So we, we kind of backtrack, kind of figure out the numbers and it, it's somewhere between a million and a half and two million somewhere you've there. You've graded so. almost two million cards yeah. personally. Wow. Okay, now this is gonna be a tough question because two million is a big number, but <laughs> is there one card over the last 20 years that, what was the highest value card that you personally graded? I'm personally a pre-war baseball guy. Okay. So I, I do pre-war in 19th century, personally. Uh, so I have had the honor and privilege of grading a T206 Wagner. Uh, that's probably my wow. favorite. Uh, and it graded a what? It was a one. Okay. It was a okay. one. So, you know. Estimated value on that at the moment? Uh, at, at the time it sold, uh, in 2008, it was 340000 I believe. Wow. But now in today's market, you know, a one with, with good eye peel, I mean, that's well over a million dollars. Yeah. You know, north of possibly two million. And there was one that sold for six million this year, I think, close to it. Yeah, and that's the thing about Wagner's is, is, you know, each time they come out, they don't go down. Right. They're always going to break <laughs> right, records. Right, right. But, you know, we haven't seen a higher grade Wagner in a very long time. You know, we had the, the five that they call the Jumbo Wagner. It's been several years. Um, but, you know, the, the big one, the, the, the one that's graded in eight, the, the former Gretzky uh, Wagner, you know, that's that's been off the market for a long time. Do you think there's a Wagner sitting in a pack somewhere that has a, that has a, a decent shot at a grade? I don't think there's one in a pack. It's always possible. There are still packs out there. I, I've actually uh, was, was with someone who... who did get a Piedmont pack and we broke it wow. and it was a, a common but it was a baseball card uh, but you also have the same odds of pulling a fish or a bird all kinds of other cards but I, I do I do strongly believe I'm convinced there are more of them out there uh, the one that I have the privilege of grading actually surfaced uh, out of nowhere it was in a family for 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 generations uh, and the family uh, kind of rediscovered the collection cool and so it was new to the hobby so there are definitely new to the hobby Wagner's out there waiting to be discovered so Wagner is both your favorite and the, the highest priced card. Uh, yes, I, th I think that, yeah, okay. it has to be the highest, yeah. Okay, well now let's switch over to modern. Let's say in the last five years, what's your favorite card you graded or the most valuable card in the last five years that you've graded? Oh, that's a tough one, because I normally just grade vintage. Uh, oh, I, I oh, help okay. with modern and train with modern, but. Uh, is there a memorable modern card that you graded? How about that? So this is going to sound terrible. <laughs> But I'm not the biggest modern fan. Okay, that's so okay. I get excited when, when, when guys, my guys bring me, you know, really cool stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't really get too excited on the modern like I do with the vintage. Okay. With these infinite periods of time we have to wait for these PSA cards to get graded. I've submitted some cards to PSA over a year ago that still aren't back. They were obviously on bulk submissions. It was, you know, 15, 20 bucks at the time. But that can't keep continuing to happen. There has to be alternative options. You know, there's got to be tiers to all this stuff. So break it down for us. How much is your base submission and how long does it take to get back? Yeah, so we, we, uh, we have our submission tiers based on the value of the card. Okay. Uh, bulk being our lowest uh, a tier, going all the way up to what we call unlimited walkthrough. Cool. Uh, and, you know, with our, our turnaround times, we, we actually update our tur turnaround times live. It's every Friday. Uh, CSGcards.com. Cool. Uh, and so people can actually track it. And to be very honest, we're here Saturday morning. I haven't checked last night yet, so I don't know what our current turnaround time is, but I know that they did just drop even more. Uh, these past almost 12 months now, we've incorporated not only new technology and how we process orders, but we've been hiring and training uh, new graders. We understand about turnaround time. You know, 
all of my graders are collectors as well, so we get it. You know, we right. hate. You, you know, love the our, hobby the same way. Exactly, exactly. So you know, turnaround time, long turnaround times, that, that hurts us too. So we want to strive to to be able to meet those to meet the demand, and and we're we're definitely getting there. We've actually bulk is our longest tier, and we're bringing that down now to where it's what the, the turnaround times are published, what our published uh, guidelines are. And you're doing on-site grading at Collectors Con right now, right? We are, so we are today, today only, yeah, till three o'clock. So how does that work? So if you submit cards uh, before 3 p.m. today on uh, Saturday, uh, you'll be able to pick them up first thing in the morning. So we're not actually grading here in the show. We have a, a secure location. And you guys are based in? So we're based in Sarasota. Okay, cool. So I pulled this Jalen Hurts yesterday with my homies. Nice. I know, I know you don't love modern, but... <laughs> no, but that's an awesome car. If I were to give this to you, it could be slabbed by tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Well, then I'd yeah. like to try this uh, yeah. CSG thing out, baby. Very cool. So on this card, I immediately checked the centering, obviously. Top yep. to bottom, left to right. Um, it looked pretty decent. You know what I mean? And obviously... Let me also ask you this, because this is what we go over. How much does the back of the card factor into the grading process? So it does factor in. It's a great question. And we have a guideline. You know, we obviously give more allowance on the back than we do the front. Okay. Because, you know, the, the whole grading scale, you know, primarily is based on eye appeal. You know, everything is geared towards eye appeal. So if a card is perfect, it's got perfect eye appeal. Right. So we take the back into consideration, but we give some allowances because that's not the first thing you see. So, you know, when you see a card that's, that has... 10 centering on front, if we're off slightly, you know, on the back, you can still possibly be in the 9.5 range, you know, just, right. just depends on what the measurement is. But but it is there is an allowance given for sure. Okay, cool. So to get that 10, you need to hit three tens and a 9.5? That's right. So if you hit three tens and a nine, it's a 9.5? That's right. Wow. It'd be Jim Mint. Yeah, okay. yeah. And okay. this is a good looking card, just, just here in the top loader, you know, I was, I was kind of looking over it. I don't see... I don't see anything that jumps out at me, so uh, I'm excited. I hope this one hits the 10. And that's what I'm talking about, at least having a chance at the 10. That's you know? it. Well, you know, and, and there's, there's something very important. And uh, so we have a classroom where we train our new graders that come in. They go through a training program. You know, that's what I, I, I train my graders is when you have a card, you start at a 10, right? Everything's a 10, and then work your way down. Because if you look at a card and find the first flaw, your mindset's already, well, now we're in this range. So let's start at the top. And then we'll work our way down. If we find flaws, then we'll bring it down. But, right. but let's start with the attitude of everything's a 10. Show me yes or no. Show me what brings it down. That's like it. That. Yep, so absolutely. Let me ask you another question. How much does dust play into when you guys are grading? Do you guys use a microfiber to wipe that, that card down? Do you not? What, yeah, how does so that work? We do. I mean, we don't spend time wiping a card, cleaning a card. Right. Um, but we will give it a wipe if it needs to be. We do, we do use microfibers. We okay. do recommend that people only use microfibers. Um, you know, there are some uh, people who, who claim they can clean card surfaces and whatnot. And unfortunately, that leaves a telltale sign. Those are uh, returned as altered. Right. Uh, but you know the, the, But if somebody's cleaning a card with a microfiber, that's But a legit. microfiber's fine. Right. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Uh, definitely use microfibers. And they'll take off anything that's on there, fingerprints, dust, anything like that. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Absolutely. Well, Andy, you are a wealth of information for the card community, even for me as somebody who rips cards every day. And it's been an absolute pleasure. And I wish you the best. And hopefully uh, I'll Thanks see you at the next me. show. Absolutely. Catch you later, brother.